Today, we are going to do a one light Christmas shot. But you know what makes it different? Everything is pink. Lindsay Adler here and every holiday season as we're leading up to Christmas time I make sure that I set aside time to create holiday themed images but of course when I do so I want them to also stand out I want to create something that I can use for marketing I can put on social media something that you'll look at and it, it doesn't blend in with the rest of the holiday images and so this year I decided one of the ways that I wanted to create an eye-catching image was to go with an unusual color if you look at my style I use color all the time. It's one of the most important elements of the way that I shoot. And so in previous years, I've done all red, red on red on red Christmas. Other years I've shot teal and pink. And so this year I decided to go with the color scheme of monochromatic pink, pink everything, pink dress, pink background, uh, pink trees. And thankfully my subject actually just dyed her hair pink. So I am just working with one hue in this image and I think it makes it stand out and create an impact. One of the important things I want you to take away from this shoe and from this image is that one of the most important things to a successful shot is what you put in front of your camera. This shoe is going to be with one light, a soft light source, and that's it. But it's going to have impact. And why does it have impact? It's because I put interesting things in front of my camera. All right, let's talk about the set that I have going on here, beginning with the background. I'm using a Savage Universal coral seamless paper background. Now, if you've been in my studio, you know that I love shooting on seamless paper. I have tons of colors to choose from. And so people often ask me, why do I choose seamless paper? Well, one of the reasons is because it's easy to set up. It doesn't wrinkle. I don't have to steam it. I can get that beautiful infinity sweep look, especially when I'm building a set that's full length. Now, in some of my classes, I teach how you can change the color of a background by using light and using gels but that's not something that you can do when shooting full length. So this is why I love using seamless paper. The other reason is I get really super saturated colors that using light, I can make them appear darker or lighter. So it gives me a ton of flexibility. Plus there are other benefits like the fact that it's recyclable and it makes a really cool set in my studio with all the seamless paper lined up. But besides that, it's perfect in this case for my monochromatic concept. So then I went online to look for some elements to build my set. So I got the artificial pink Christmas tree. We wrapped some presents in pink paper. I got pink ornaments because I thought that if I just had one element of Christmas, the shot wouldn't be quite as interesting. It wouldn't be like a developed scene. So we did that, built our scene, and then we introduced our model. And again, pink clothing, pink jacket, pink hair. And so now those are all the ingredients that I need to have a monochromatic pink image that stands out from all of the other Christmas imagery. I've got my set, but now let's talk about shooting this actual image. I'm going to be using the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105. Now, the reason that I am choosing this lens is because I want to be able to shoot wider compositions. I could choose a 50, but the 24 to 105 gives me a little bit more variability. But now on to our lighting. As I mentioned, this is just a one light shot, and I'm going to use a large umbrella with diffusion. Fundamentally, what that does is it gives me a large, broad, soft light source. And so the idea for this shot is I want to have everything pretty much evenly lit because I really want to play up that even color and have that pink throughout. So I'm going to take the large umbrella with diffusion and I'm going to mostly center it on my scene. I don't want it completely centered in the shot. I'm going to have it just slightly off to the left hand side of the frame so that I get a little bit of shadow and a little bit of sculpting on my subject's face and on the scene to give a tiny bit more dimension without it becoming low key. I want everything to be poppy and high key and colorful. So I'm almost centered with my modifier. So let me move that into the scene. Okay, so just a couple final considerations before I go and work on posing and composition is I'm going to back up a little bit and use a slightly longer focal length. And the reason I'm going to do this is if I'm really close and wide angle with my subject and I have those trees and I'm trying to get the entire scene, what happens is I'll start to actually see the edges of the background. But by backing up and zooming in, I compress the scene and it's going to give me a more pleasing composition so I can fit more of the trees and more of my subject into my frame. All right, so with that, let's get the shot. What I want to 
want to do is I want to take a moment to show you a little bit what I would do with color grading because I think that I can get the image most of the way there in camera but I can make it much more romantic, maybe a little bit more polished by how I play with color in post. Now I'm going to be editing color using Capture One and I am not going to be editing the color of the background or the trees. Now, for example, when you're using a monochromatic image, if I want to select one part of that color and adjust it, it's going to be a huge pain because it's all pretty much the same color. So it's not like using a green screen where you can select out that specific hue. So instead, what I want to do is I actually want to adjust color overall in the scene just for a little bit more pop as well as playing around with the contrast. So to start off with, I am going to slightly desaturate the image and everything goes a little bit more pastel. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this, I was going for that like pastel pink look uh, that has like a little bit of a retro or vintage feel to it. Actually, several of the references as we built this shot were vintage vibes. So you see you have a little bit of that vibe in her hair as well as the color of the artificial trees. So I think desaturating it makes everything look a little bit more pastel, gives it a little bit more of a vintage look. Next up, I'm going to pop the contrast just a little bit, makes the blacks a little bit darker, makes her pop out from the scene a tiny bit more. Now, if I wanna go and really lean into this vintage vibe even more so, what I can do is I can pop over to my color editors and I'm actually going to change two things. First of all, I'm going to desaturate her skin tone a tiny bit more. Let me just see, I'm gonna go into her, the oranges, make it a little paler. And then I'm going to go over to the color balance. What this allows me to do is add a little bit of a color tone, a color shift into the midtones, shadows, and highlights. And so to make this look a little vintagey, I think I'm going to go maybe add a little blue to the shadows, maybe add a little yellow to the highlights. And so this is not necessarily the right way to color grade. There are many different color combinations that I could achieve, but I think that this is giving it a pretty rich and a little bit of a vintage look. We got our first look, but now we decided that we want to switch it up a little bit. We want to create a shot that has a little bit more depth and maybe a little bit softer lighting. All right, so here's what we did. We took those Christmas trees and we moved them around to create depth in the scene. So one closer to the camera, one further from the camera, so that we have kind of a foreground, middle ground, and background. Now, in order to light these more evenly, we took the exact same modifier, the exact same strobe, the same everything, but we turned it and are bouncing it now into the wall and part of the ceiling to the left-hand side of the frame. Now, the reason that this makes the light softer and a little bit more omnipresent in the scene is because that large light source now spreads out and it bounces off the wall and the ceiling. And fundamentally, the light source is now much larger because the light source is the wall in the ceiling. And that's why we have such a beautiful, soft light result on this shot. Now, next up, when you bounce that light, you're going to use a lot of light, you're gonna lose a lot of it. So in the first shot, I was shooting at 1 200th of a second, F8 ISO 200. But now that I have turned the light around and I am bouncing it, it is losing a lot of its power. And so I need to shoot at 1 200th of a second, F4 ISO 640. And so you can see that I gave myself several stops of light to work with. Now, another benefit of shooting at F4 is that I'll have a little bit narrower depth of field. And because in this shot I'm trying to show depth, I actually would like to have a little bit of the foreground and background out of focus because that's going to give the feeling of there being more depth in the image. Now with the light from the umbrella bouncing and spreading out so much, it also gives me a good opportunity to add a V-flat to the right-hand side of the frame. What that's going to do is going to bounce a little bit of light back into the shadows because right now there is a very directional light source. It's coming all from one side of the frame and this shot isn't meant to be dark and dramatic so the V-flat helps lift up the shadows just a little bit. So now that we've changed our camera settings, changed our scene, changed our lighting, let's get the shot of this next image. Okay, perfect, just like that. I'm gonna have you keep your chin to the right because that's the direction of the light, perfect. These two images are quite different, but they're both a beautiful monochromatic pink Christmas image, which really makes them stand out. 
Now, if you wanna see the gear that was used in the making of these photographs, be sure to check the links in the description below. And I specifically have a link to the beautiful coral background that was used for these shots. Now, if you've enjoyed these videos and you wanna see a lot more like these, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, happy holidays, and see you next time.